Welcome back. This is a new episode I'm trying to do and explain a little bit about Jitter. And we're going to focus a little bit about some of the common errors and the fundamentals of Jitter measurement. And we're going to talk a little bit about what we call time interval error. So if you've ever, ever been into a, a situation where people talk about Jitter, talk about this, I hope that you can understand some of the technologies that has been involved to handle uh, especially when you have an embedded uh, clock in the data stream. Let me show you how to do it. Sorry, I got a, <laughs> a, a ping there. But anyway, if you're going into this, the, the details here. So look at this screen, but you know, here we can see that we have an eye diagram, we have some jitter. I will walk you through this and we can, we com will come up to the same result here. And hopefully this gives you an insight what kind of, what, what is jitter. Because it's all relative to what kind of points it's set from the beginning. It could be good, it could be bad, but really tr try to understand the key concept which is related to the one most important criteria, the clock recovery method. So, first of all, what wh what is jitter? So if you look at this, there's kind of I found this one, but anyway, we're going to talk about time interval errors. So you have a data uh, signal, and within that, you, you embed your clock. And what's important I is to have that clock at the same edge as the data. So when you extract you know, the clock, the clock and the data should be aligned, because if they're not aligned, this misalignment is a part of what we call jitter. So I've been too long here. So I'm going to run this session here. I'm going to open a file. And by the way, I will put a link to this one. You can test this software for free for 30 days. Just download it, and then you need to download the license file. And when you download this, you have access to the same files I have here. So there's nothing special. So I will use this one, number three. I will open this one. Here you go, ref one. So first of, first of all, we start by adding a measurement to this to get a feeling for what it is. And we going to make this a little bit more complicated in the end. So the fundamentals of Jitter are set the time interval error. It's where the clock should be versus it can think it is. So we put this on. I measure this one and I can plot this. Some people tend to plot everything, you know, in a histogram or a time trend or a spectrum. We'll go through the different views and, you know, try to explain what the difference is. But I will just run a trend plot, which means if the clock is behind or if it's before. And we can see a line of that if it's before or after. And the peak of that one is the, you know, it's the, it's the time interval error. So I will plot the time trend. I will plus this one. So you can see here from this one, uh, we have uh, like a minus 300 picosecond to plus almost like 500 picosecond. If we would render an eye on this one, it would be closed, no, no matter what. One of the key things we did here is, and this is important, it's actually to select a kind of a clock recovery. In this particular setup, it shows constant clock mean. What if we add another measurement, the same type of measurement, we would do two times, uh, and here's the measurement, and measurement two, I can actually rename this. That's what it we have one, two, three. And the second one, we will have a clock recovery, which is fixed. Uh, let me try to find uh, fixed. And I know that uh, it's eight gig, eight gig, enter. And the third one, we will do a clock recovery using a PLL. And we take one, one megahertz. Yeah, you can play with this one. And I want to do the plots, then we'll do the same type of plots. We do a time trend on this one. And you can see it's a, uh, you know, this one and this one is pretty much the same. But this one, if I plot this one, it, it's much less. The fundamental thing is here, if you, if you have, you can see this one. If you take and do an FFT of this one, you will get the spectral content on what's behind your jitter, what's behind this one. And we call it spectrum. So I have the possibility to add the spectrum here as well. I can the first one to do a spectrum. And this is the tricky one for me because I don't like this one. I need to configure the plot into linear and log. So this gives me the frequency content just on the base mean and saying that 
in in frequency lower than one megahertz there's a huge impact on the total content of the jitter if i look at the next one who was a fixed clock and i do the same thing here sorry for this confusion but i i you really like it to be opposite we can say it should be the similar it's probably a little bit worse this one the first one and the third one we do it where we have a, a pll which is locking to this low frequency stuff and we do a spectrum again sorry for this i just repeat myself <laughs> anyway and you see now that you know this scale is like 50 picosecond this scale is 50 because but when we have a pll we can still see that there's some issues you know from one meg and above so what i will do now is very very simple i will go back to the configure and this is the one here and i will change this one up to five meg and of course it's lower so if you have a low frequency crossover some sources of acdc or dcdc converter that adds to, to to your signal then using a mean clock or a fixed clock won't help this problem and now we're getting into where i wanted to start from the beginning and depending how you set this one you're gonna end up with different results in the jitter so i had a lot of discussions about this where people actually forget to set the right type of bandwidth the right type of the pll bandwidth etc or the damping which means the result makes no sense so if you look at the result table now uh, we really don't care too much about the, the other one here yeah let's see we can just move it like this so we can see that you know time interval error you know one time interval two we had the 591 5 and, and 48 and that's a huge difference we can actually go in now and select other type of measurement we can to do random random and if i have a random measurement here and then we have a deterministic the difference between random and random normally can't do much about it's kind of it's there to thermal noise etc but deterministic it's inside your design it could be crosstalk or be other sources of things that you can point down to see where is my problem we won't go into the this is just a basic overview but now i will do the configuration for them a little bit different so if we look at the clock recovery here for this one here here's the you know type one and this one should be the same a clock recovery you know five meg which is the good one and you go to the results here and we can say that we have random jitter is 3.4 deterministic is 21 picosecond fine now i will add the two other measurement and you just pick one of the others so i will select the same thing the random and the deterministic jitter but i will change the clock recovery method for these two this is the one and we go for a constant mean doesn't really matter and we have this one we do the same thing and we go for constant mean and when it's done i have the results again and here is where it's getting crazy so if somebody told me oh i have you know the random jitter is so high how can it be thermal noise it's not always thermal noise it's a way you have you extract the clock but look at the deterministic jitter it reports at 283 versus 21. anyway this is a very short overview and i just wanted to highlight again that when you work from the time interval error which is the part when you have an embedded clock in your data stream and you recover the clock faulty and not using the best technologies you will end up in results that doesn't make sense the so first check out your clock recovery make sure it's right and then we can continue this video another time if you want related to the, the 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 fundamentals of you know problem solving I in deep jitter because we will be able to separate all these particles you know that is the determined jitter, uh, jitter thank you so much i hope you like this video format if you would just say hello or make a comment it will be appreciated thank you guys bye